What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm bringing you a update to the 11th Legion, the Celestial Sons. So I'm going to call this little segment, Forging a Narrative, the Lost Legion Update. So basically what I'm trying to do with this army is I'm trying to get it all organized, I'm trying to get it all, all the lore for it compiled into a more readily available and easier to read and understand kind of segment so right now I just have a playlist where I just compiled everything that has to do with the 11th Legion into it and I feel like it's a little jumbled up so I spent the last uh, day and a half trying to go through all my notes everything I have on Facebook everything I have on YouTube and everything I have written down and tried to compile it into something that makes more sense. Um, now the thing that really helped me a lot was my Celestial Sun timeline. So first and foremost, if you guys want to have a better idea of what the 11th Legion is, what my uh, custom Space Marine chapter is, I greatly recommend you guys type in Celestial Sun timeline in our playlists or just you know type it in on the YouTube search box, it'll come up. And this is about a, I don't know, there's like 30 bullets that I have, uh, bullet points that is, and it just goes through all the information I have as of about a few few months ago on the Celestial Suns. I've added a little bit to it, but for the most part that's the main meat, so to speak. So anyway, that's, that's a big chunk of it that'll get you all caught up for the most part on what this project is if you have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's actually get into it. So I've been developing a fan chapter or a fan legion for that matter on the Lost Legion known as what I called them, <laughs> the Celestial Suns. Because right now the Lost Legions, they don't have any names. Uh, we know they existed, but the Emperor had an edict of obliteration, meaning all likeliness, symbols, any data information on these two legions have been expunged from history. So I decided to go ahead and kind of forge my own lore on this and I've been working on it for about two years I believe. So basically it's the 11th legion, the Celestial Sons. So if you don't know their Primarch is Alec Elric. He is a psyker, surprise surprise, <laughs> and uh, he's been trying to uh, basically fulfill the Emperor's dream. Uh, to give you a little bit of backstory, Elric was brought to a world all thanks to Chaos who actually corrupted him a little bit and the Emperor saved him from this world and now he looks up to the Emperor and he wants to basically pay him back for saving his life. So because of that he goes double time into honing and training the Celestial Sons Marines into a fighting force that would actually benefit the Emperor in his Great Crusade and overall to just benefit humanity. But it's this is Warhammer 40k, this is all about grim dark. there is no hope in this future, there is only war, so things don't always go according to plan. So anyway, before I go more deep into it, I do want to say that with this lore, um, you could read all about uh, my Primarch's origins in the first part, which is called The Ascending Sun. So, I am trying to organize this lore into chapters. Um, this is the 11th Legion, so I do want to have 11 chapters for it. So chapter 1, like I said, is called The Ascending Sun, and it goes through my Primarch's origins. Chapter 2 would be um, basically Elric taking control of the Celestial Sons and training and honing his legion to be the fighting force that he wants them. Uh, chapter 3 is called Death and Decay. This is out on YouTube, or at least the first part is, and it deals with Lord Commander Sol Oros and his encounter on the moon of Eldia. And then from here on it turns to part 2, which is the main meat of this chapter which has to do with a forge world that has been overcome by Nurgle. Now chapter 4 is the Fractured Sun Incident. So this is the most important thing that has happened to them 
uh, to them being the Celestial Sons. So this is where they're betrayed by the Emperor, where they battle the Space Wolves, the Adeptus Custodes, the Sisters of Silence, and they basically get their butts whooped. <laughs> this is also where the creation of the Infernal Sons begins. Now the Infernal Sons is a Chaos Warband that originated from the survivors of the Celestial Sons during this uh, Edict of Obliteration. So they're like, yo, we've been betrayed by the Emperor, we've been betrayed by our Primarch, hell, even our Battle Brothers don't even like us, so let's uh, praise the Chaos Gods and take our revenge. And then from here, there's inklings that the Primarch is slowly losing his light, meaning he's slowly going to the Chaotic side. So this is a very important chapter, this is chapter 4. From here on out, we get to chapter 5, it involves the gods. Uh, chapter 5 is called Prison of the Gods, and this is where the Celestial Sons kind of get a little glimmer of hope, where they discover a Catan Shard. And so they're harnessing the power of these ancient star gods to kind of get themselves re-motivated, re re-energized to, again, try to get their goals going, try to get them set on the right path and whatnot. And then chapter 6 is called The Infinite Hunt. So ever since they encounter the Catan Shards, they find out that Trazian has some answers for them. So they go to Trazian, and then Trazian's like, yo, I'll give you the answers you need, but you need to bring some relics to me. So there's, an, there's a hunt for the relics here. Uh, chapter 7 is a great battle that deals with one of the relics. So they go to an Eldar craft world, and they're trying to take some soul stones. So first they get into a huge battle with the Eldar, and then near the end of this chapter, the Infernal Sons come in. So chapter 8 is where I talk about what the Infernal Sons have been doing ever since chapter 4 up to this point, and it's called the Shadow of the Celestial Sun, because even though the Celestial Sun fights for justice, for righteousness, this bright burning light in the sky does cast a very dark shadow and that is that Chaos Warband. And then we go to Chapter 9, which is another battle that is on YouTube. It's called Battle of the Frozen Light. A Basically, it's just kind of like a side mission where a fraction of the Celestial Sons have gone off and they've kind of needed to fight against a... Well, I wouldn't say a... It was kind of like a splinter fleet, so to speak, of the Grey Knights. A really awesome battle. Um, basically, it was a bat battle report that I did with my buddy, and it was so epic that I made it into a narrative battle report, and I decided to include it here into the lore. So that's what that is all about. And then from there on, uh, chapters 10 and 11, I'm still contemplating a little bit, because I'm not 100% sure if I want the Celestial Sun lore to have a definite ending, or if I should kind of make it a cliffhanger, or have it be something where you guys can fill in what happens to them because currently with 8th edition the story, the lore for Warhammer 40k is progressing so we don't know exactly where it's going and with that being said it's like I don't know how I need my lore to adapt so like I, like I said before um, Elric he's trying to achieve basically what the Emperor wanted to. So if the Emperor does die, will his will his goal be different? If the Emperor gets resurrected, do you think he'll be forgiven by the Emperor? Uh, my Primarch, that is. So there's a lot of questioning that goes on there. I'm not exactly 100% sure what I want to do with it, but I do know that the task that they are trying to accomplish, which is trying to resurrect the Emperor, um, that's going to be really tough really really tough because first of all if what we kind of can infer the terminus decree may be what is needed to resurrect the emperor and in order to get to that terminus decree you got to get to the main world i believe of titan titan is where the gray knights are at and they're guarding that that terminus decree so the celestial sons are trying to get to mars try to fight their way to mars get to Mars, get to the vault where the Void Dragon is, resurrect the Void Dragon, or free the Void Dragon, somehow take control of the Void Dragon, 
and then fight their way to Terra to use the Void Dragon to bring back the Emperor via the Golden Throne. Yeah, this is really, I feel like this is an impossible task, so again, I'm not sure if uh, this is something that should be attempted, or maybe they get completely taken out in this massive battle to get to Terra. So with that, uh, I guess that's my question to you guys. Uh, so again, how should I end this lore? Should I keep it going? Should I leave it ambiguous? I don't know. Um, again, it's up to you guys, and I think I've spoken enough on this. This was supposed to be just a little update <laughs> on my little timeline, the whole chapter thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think, and uh, we'll go from there. Stay tuned for more lore on the 11th Legion, and that's all I've got for you guys. This is the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.